Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. I'm Philip Cloud, and this is Philip in the Cloud. Okay, I'm getting an error from YouTube. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'll keep going. Looks like the playback is weird on my side. Uh, anyway, welcome to the stream. I'm Philip Cloud. This is Philip in the Cloud, and today I'm going to give the lightning talk that I was supposed to give but couldn't because there were technical issues at Pi Data Seattle 2023, which otherwise was a really great conference. Got to meet a bunch of people that I haven't seen in a while, and it was overall a good conference. But today, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to try to answer the question, what is Python divided by SQL? Uh, back in undergrad, I had a linear algebra professor who liked to tell people uh, that dividing uh, a number by a matrix was like dividing one by cat. And so I doubt this person is watching, but uh, I'm here to say that you can't actually divide a word by another word. So let's, let's get into it. We're in IPython, usual setup. I'm going to import a bunch of things from IPS Interactive. I'm going to import OS because we're going to be connecting to Snowflake. I'm then going to pull out a table. I'm going to say con.table history day, which is some weather data from a, a data set we've got loaded up into Snowpark. I'm going to say Snowpark, sorry, Snowflake, not Snowpark. Um, and then I'm going to get the schema on point ID. Let's see if we can get that out. <clears throat> cool. Let's take a look at it. We've got a bunch of stuff. Uh, Snowflake likes to uh, have all their columns in shouting case, so we're going to fix that up here in a second, but I just want to take a look at all the columns. There's a bunch wind speed, wind direction, precipitation, cloud cover, etc., etc. There's a bunch of uh, weather numbers going on here. So let's relabel that and we'll say we'll use the special string snake case which is just a special token that kind of uh, lower kisses everything converts camel case into snake case and clean that up real quick and get rid of our shouting case columns cool we've got some things that look relatively sane now um, let's take a look at country and see how many distinct values there are let's say n unique like the pandas aggregate there's only one, so it's not that useful of a column. So let's just jettison that thing right away. We've already got a bunch of columns. We don't need any extras that are not very useful. Let's also use a selector to get all the columns that are not uh, weather numbers. So again, we'll say t dot uh, select, and we're going to take the first. Uh, let's see. Let, let's actually take a look at our table without country. Okay, so now we've got only three columns at the front that are not, you know, sort of getting into these weather numbers. So let's say t equals t dot select uh, s dot r colon three. R is a special object that you can pass a. a you can use get items in text, and it will generate uh, a selector that uh, kind of expands that slice to the first uh, to, to the columns that match that range. Uh, or, uh, and let's just pull out the wind speed to demonstrate what we're going to do here uh, instead of kind of looking at every single column because uh, there's a lot of columns. Finally, let's throw that into a cat. Let's, let's just make a temporary table out of that um, so that we can reduce kind of the amount of SQL we're looking at uh, in the final example. So what cache is going to do is actually going to create, it's going to pull out the SQL from the expression, in this case t. It's going to be some select statement and, a, and you know maybe some other select for the drop. Uh, and then it's going to create a temporary table that lives for the lifetime of your current session. Um, I don't know exactly what it's tied to. Usually these kind of things are tied to uh, a socket connection. I don't know if that's actually what it's tied to in Snowflake. But basically, when the interpreter shuts down and you close all of your connections to Snowflake for the current session, the t uh, Snowflake will automatically clean up that uh, that temp table. This is a nice way to store a complex computation and have IBIS remember that any downstream computations from that expression 
will be created off of the temp table, which can, you know, make, you know, if you've got something really expensive, you don't want to keep repeating the computation over and over. You can use the cache method. It's pretty nice. Okay, so what does that, so what does that look like? It doesn't look like anything fancy, except now we've got a bunch, we've got many fewer columns. Now we've only got, how many do we have? 12. Cool. Let's look at the SQL for that. Just see what that looks like. Let's look at T. It's not, it's not anything super fancy going on here. We've just got a select statement with all the columns. And you can see it's coming from this like weird looking table name. That's just a UUID we generate um, to be a unique name for the table in, uh, in, this, in this schema for the temp table for the, for the cat that, that was created by the cache method. So th this is kind of maybe we want to like tidy this data up. We've got we've got a bunch of sort of value like column names that should probably be values, right? Each of these columns is some kind of metric over the wind speed, and 10, 80, and 100 are some kind of grouping. I'm not exactly sure what they are. So let's pivot this data. Pivot longer is the method you want to use here. You kind of want to take this thing from a wide table. Uh, into a longer table that maybe has like, you know, a column for the metric, uh, you know, one for, so one for the so the summary value, so uh, min, max, and average, and then we've got wind speed, and then we've got these groupings. So let's, let's, let's do, let's just do that. Pivot longer. And we're going to say contains wind speed. So we're, we're pulling out only, we're, we're pivoting only on the columns that say wind speed. All the other things that contain the string wind speed. Every other column is going to be left alone. And we're going to convert, uh, sorry, we're going to, we're going to use the names pattern argument to like rip out things from, from these columns, uh, from the column names. So we're going to match on min or max or average followed by wind speed, followed by uh, any number of digits, let's just put an R here, followed by anything. We don't really care whatever is after that because it's kind of all the same. Now what, what's happening here is that IBIS is actually going to run this regular expression, pull out the groups, and then turn that, and then use that to sort of populate the names to argument. And so since we have two capture groups in our regular expression, we want to assign them the names metric, which is min, max, average, and then we're going to assign these numeric values of opaque column name, group. And then we know that we only have the wind speed metric here, sorry, wind speed value. So we're just going to name the values to column wind speed. If I could type. Now we created this table PT, pivot table. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. Now we've got this nice, tidy data. And that's sort of the end of the example here. But before, we said we were going to compute you know, Python divided by SQL. So what am I actually doing here? Well, it took us this many lines of Python. So what is this? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lines of Python. So let's make a variable 6. Uh, variable Python with the value 6. And then let's rip out the SQL here from PT. We'll say string ibis to SQL PT, and we're going to count the number of new line characters in that string. And then we're going to assign that to SQL. So it's 36 lines of SQL for 6 lines of Python. So Python divided by SQL is equal to 0.166 ad infinitum. And that is the answer to Python divided by SQL and the end of my lightning talk that didn't actually happen. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope to see you next time.